I'm Heather Burke. I'm the director of the Center for Aquaculture and Seafood Development at the Fisheries and Marine Institute. And I'm co-hosting the first ever Seafood Industry Innovation Summit that we'll be hosting here at the Marine Institute in November of 2023. Heather, what are the exact dates? It uh, will be November the 14th to the 17th. The 14th will be a half day starting in the afternoon. Uh, there'll be two full days on the 15th and 16th, and the 17th will be a half day ending around lunchtime. So let me ask you this, what is your background in terms of what makes you excited because of your background to be part of this Seafood Industry Innovation Summit? Yeah, so I've been working uh, with the Fisheries and Marine Institute for 25 years. Uh, my role is to engage with industry, work with groups such as the Canadian Centre for Fisheries Innovation, and you'll hear from Keith shortly, who's my co-host for this event. Uh, so we promote uh, innovations, new technologies, new developments, sustainability, and all those types of uh, wonderful things for the seafood uh, sector within Newfoundland, Atlantic Canada, and abroad. And of course, you know, bringing these technologies to New Newfoundland to showcase them here at the Marine Institute is very exciting for us. And I think it will it will resonate well with a lot of industry participants uh, in Atlantic Canada. I'll awesome. switch over to Keith here now. Keith, could you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Yes, hi, Keith Hutchings, a Managing Director at Canadian Centre for Fisheries Innovation. Uh, we've been around for approximately 30 years, and uh, we deal with industry, the wild harvest, the aquaculture industry, and the processing sector. And we deal with industry in terms of being nimble and able to be react, react quickly to uh, industry issues or problems that arise or technology adaptation that's required uh, to solve particular issues in the industry at any one time. We certainly pride ourselves on being uh, nimble, being able to react quickly, and be able to access funding in a shared partnership and collaboration with industry to meet the needs of the sector. Uh, we work with industry, academia, research, uh, certainly domestically, nationally, and internationally in terms of solving those issues or adopting the technology or recognizing the innovation in other areas or developing it here to certainly uh, meet the problems and the industry needs. Uh, we work very closely with uh, with Heather's organization and with the Marine Institute, Memorial University, and we pride ourselves to be able to collaborate with other uh, academic institutions and research institu institutions, either in Atlantic Canada, in other parts of Canada, and certainly outside of this jurisdiction. So our key components are working collaboratively, finding solutions with applied research, and being able to engage and respond to industry uh, to meet their timelines and their needs. Keith, that's amazing. Um, just looking at some of the themes that uh, the summit has, automation. I mean, the industry has come a long way in the 30 years that your organization has been on the go. What do you see in terms of what the discussions around automation, anything in particular like to highlight? Well, it's an interesting comment that you suggest because I've had this conversation with Heather before and talked about uh, you know, the fishing industry and innovation and technology and the adaptation that's gone over 30 years. I often say we don't celebrate that. It's not really recognized in the fishing industry. People have a view sometimes of the fishing industry and what it is. Uh, the fishing industry of today and the past decades is a global industry. Um, you know, Newfoundland in terms of what it uh, uh, produces, Atlantic Canada in terms of what it's produced is quite significant in the global market. But that global market has changed. And, you know, the, the idea of sustainability, of the environmental conditions, of good stewardship, all of those are part of the industry today and will be going forward. And obviously, from a commercial perspective, it's about the business model. Investment, uh, business owners, they certainly need to have a return on their investment. And they're, first and foremost, they want to see a sustainable in industry. And, the, you know, this summit brings together some of those leaders, all of those leaders, we hope, to talk about uh, you know, the automation you referenced and how, you know, we adopt leading edge technology that allows us to support the industry and continue to make it sustainable and profitable for those that are engaged in the industry, which is extremely important. And that technology comes from various jurisdictions. We develop it here. CCFI in conjunction with the Marine Institute, you know, has has developed its own uh, sea cucumber uh, uh, processing machine. We've also worked on crab robotics in terms of developing it here at the institution, but as well, uh, we've worked with uh, countries like Norway in terms of adopting technology related to uh, sea urchins on the seabed and extracting sea urchins from the latest technology. 
So our interaction is broad. Uh, our expertise is immense and uh, there's great opportunities to continue. And this session, this summit allows us to engage with industry to build on what we've, we have to date. Keith, that's amazing. You know, as someone who doesn't actually, frankly, know a lot about the industry, it's just fascinating listening to you talk about that. And kudos to you and Heather for your both organizations doing what you do. Heather, I'm going to switch over to you. Uh, we just talked about automation as one of the themes. Digitization. Um, Gale Force Winds, we do a lot of trade shows around the world. Digitization is something that is talked about. I notice here it's listed artificial intelligence. Frankly, I never thought a lot about artificial intelligence for the seafood industry. Tell us a little bit about what you know and what you hope to learn and present at the summit about that. I hope to learn a lot about it myself, actually, because I'm not, uh, I wouldn't consider myself up on digitization technologies, uh, but it is being used more and more in, in the processing sector. Uh, we can learn things from the automotive industry, um, you know, that can be applied to the seafood sector. Uh, we do have uh, one group uh, that will be doing a workshop on digitization. Uh, they'll be using it to demonstrate uh, traceability technology for the seafood sector and how, uh, how that can help um, improve improve efficiencies, uh, food safety, and those types of uh, applications. Uh, with respect to artificial intelligence, I mean, that can be incorporated into a lot of technologies for actually processing seafood. Uh, Keith mentioned some of the robotics and automation that's been developed here at the Marine Institute with the Canadian Centre for Fisheries Innovation. Uh, there are even newer technologies out there now that can allow us to learn more about how we can enhance what we've already developed here at the MI. Um, so there's new gripping technology as an example. So some of the early robotics work that we worked on, the gripping technology wasn't available at that time. Uh, so new grippers so that you can actually handle uh, a fish. I mean, fish are fairly slippery to handle. So trying to train a robot how to do that uh, requires quite a lot of uh, uh, technology, a lot of development work. So we're hoping to learn more about those types of applications and how we might be able to incorporate that into some of the work that we're doing uh, jointly here at the Marine Institute and the Canadian Centre for Fisheries Innovation. Very interesting, Heather, very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, like even you both are excited to learn more. There's so much to learn about this industry. Keith, I'm gonna throw it back to you. The third and final theme is byproduct valorization. That's not a word that I'm that familiar with. Tell us a little bit about uh, leveraging side streams to achieve full utilization and value maximization. Yeah, uh, you know, today the term is often used as a circular economy where, you know, all resources maximize and is reverted uh, back to further use. So nothing is lost in terms of the process of harvesting a resource and what's extracted from it. You know, Heather's center has done tremendous work over the years in terms of evaluating and assessing, you know, the value of product that's produced today uh, is simply something as a cod. If, if a processor is, you know, um, buying a cod from a harvester for a certain value or whether it's crab, I mean, oftentimes that full value, and it is the full value is not totally being used in terms of the volume of that species that's caught. Uh, you know, cod could be 40% with fillets, a crab could be 40%, could be lost. Sea cucumbers with the, certainly with the water content and other uh, aspects of it that are not, that are not uh, processed today or used for other, other utilization. I mean, that's a cost that's incurred and lost to the actual producer and the investor, but it's also a value based on uh, the uh, content of that species of what's, what it could be used for. That's not, that's not used either. So, you know, we look at areas like pharmaceuticals, you know, pet food, you know, various aspects of healthcare that uh, research is being done on various products. And Heather is very knowledgeable in these areas, uh, you know, collagen from cod, uh, other, you know, a variety of aspects that can be used, uh, which is extremely important, you know, from a pharmaceutical perspective, from a healthcare perspective. So how do we fully utilize that species that's landed? And, you know, we've seen examples of that certainly here with efforts been done in, in with seal, in terms of seal oil, as an example, and other attributes that are retained from that uh, species as harvested that may not have been done before. But globally, it's needed. And, uh, you know, we look at areas like Iceland, who are highly concentrated in utilization, 100% utilization. 
But I think industry is there now, but it's just a matter of putting that runway in and that platform and having that knowledge to explore with them and certainly uh, increase the value today of what it is that's being harvested. And then that value goes through the total supply chain. Everybody uh, gets a return based on that uh, extended uh, utilization, uh, which is very important. I just want, Jerry, if I could go back and just, I know you spoke of artificial intelligence and, and Heather mentioned as well, the excitement about coming together and actually having further insight and discussion about that. CCFI, interesting over the past year, has had two projects related to artificial intelligence, one related to developing a predictive biomass model for the shrimp industry, uh, looking at massive amount of data that's, that's being collected and is being collected today and able to synthesize that and break it out to actually use all of that data, which would probably take years for humans to do, to try and come up with a model that greater predicts the biomass for shrimp uh, up north, down the northeast coast of Newfoundland, uh, that the industry can use and certainly ties to the sustainability and work with DFO in terms of we have greater insight into the, the, the resource, you know, how it responds to very climatic changes, how it's fished, when it's fished. You know, all of that is very valuable when you look at resource management and artificial intelligence is being used for that. The other one we're looking at, and Heather mentioned that, is in regard to automation. You know, how do we uh, basically look at the various conditions through cameras or other digitalization when it's being processed? And how do we quickly turn that around to make key decisions on how that product is further processed? Uh, and so those are exciting areas. And as Heather said, you know, we're very interested to hear from processors where we are today. Are they using artificial intelligence? Do they understand it? Is there new ways that they can think about how we can use it? And all that is very collectively is going to be a great discussion and insight into going ahead in the years coming. That's fascinating, Keith. You know, I've fooled around with uh, artificial intelligence from the marketing perspective, and I am astounded at the power of it. I can't wait to yeah. see and hear what's going to, you know, what people are working on. Thanks for bringing that point up. Heather, I'm going to switch over to you to talk a little bit about the platforms. On your site here, it mm -hmm. says there's plenary sessions, pilot plant demonstrations, workshops, and networking. Talk a little bit about the summit so that anyone watching this will know what to expect. Yeah, so thanks, Jerry. Um, so what we wanted to do with this summit was treat it a little differently than uh, your your normal conference or um, exhibition. Uh, we wanted to provide opportunities for the participants to do some hands-on um, um, have some hands-on experience with new technologies and be able to talk to the manufacturers and the designers of these new technologies. So we've organized the summit around uh, three key platforms. So one is a plenary, and that will be your traditional plenary type of session where we will have speakers and they will highlight new technologies that their companies offer or how they've incorporated it into their organizations and so on. Uh, so they will be basically 20 minute presentations from a, a range of uh, different companies. So we've got uh, Botter from uh, Botter North America. We've got uh, Hyperbaric out of Spain. Uh, we've got Deep Chill Technologies and a few others. Uh, so they will be giving some plenary um, presentations, but then we will move into um, our hands-on demonstrations, which will take place in our pilot plant here at the Marine Institute. So we will actually have live demonstrations of equipment and new technologies that are either uh, already uh, available through a number of these large companies or they may be new and under development. Uh, so we will have demonstrations of new crab processing equipment, sea cucumber processing equipment, uh, white fish processing equipment, ice slurry equipment, and high pressure processing equipment. So, so the participants will actually see the equipment running, will be running product through it. They'll have an opportunity to ask questions to the manufacturers about how it functions, how it could be incorporated into a processing line, and those types of uh, scenarios. Uh, the, the third platform that we're using are smaller breakout groups. We're calling them workshops. And that's where you will have a group that's uh, basically it's a, um, it's a group led discussion. So we will have facilitators who will tackle a particular topic. I think we've got, um, we've got two right now related to byproduct valorization. One is very specific on sea cucumber. So our own uh, research scientist, Dr. Topeka Dave, uh, she will be bringing 
leading the group through the types of work that she has been doing with her research team on extracting bioactive compounds from underutilized parts of sea cucumber. So the gut material or what we call the flower of the sea cucumber, which is the mouth and tentacle, it's very high in polyphenolic compounds. And those compounds have a lot of applications for uh, treating things like high blood pressure. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory. Um, it's been linked to antiviral um, um, capacities or antiviral properties in some instances. So she'll be leading a group through all of those exciting things that you can do with stuff that we're traditionally just throwing away. Uh, so those workshops are designed to allow a very uh, dynamic interaction with the experts who are doing this type of work and with participants who want to learn uh, more about how they can maximize the value of their raw material that right now they don't have a market for. So uh, understanding uh, what you can actually extract from uh, that material and what the potential markets are will be a key focus of some of these workshops. Uh, there'll be some other workshops um, around uh, um, new product development. So as an example, Hyperbaric will be uh, taking the group through how to use high pressure processing and what types of applications it has in seafood processing. So high pressure processing, we use it um, to extract raw meat from shellfish by applying the uh, high hydrostatic pressure, it breaks the bond between the meat and the shell in crab, for example, lobster, mussels, oysters, and you can extract the meat whole uh, without cooking it. So that opens up a whole new uh, category or a whole new market uh, opportunity in the sushi market, as an example. So those are the types of things that uh, will happen during the workshop sessions. So it's a very dynamic type of, um, of summit. Um, we hope that there's something there for everybody, whether it's the plenaries, it's the hands-on demonstrations or the interactive workshops that will be taking place throughout the four days. And we've also included some networking. We haven't forgotten about that. So we have an opening social, uh, which is sponsored by Quinlan Brothers. Uh, it will be held at uh, Shamrock City Pub on Water Street. Uh, so that's a, a local uh, Irish pub. They have live music uh, every night. So they've guaranteed me that there will be live music on the night that our, our group will be, um, be there at the venue. Uh, we have an opening reception uh, sponsored by Botter, uh, which will take place at the Alt Hotel on uh, the second night. So that'll be on the Tuesday evening. And uh, then we also have a networking luncheon uh, planned for, I think this one's taking place on Thursday. Keith is actually going to do a facilitated discussion with some invited guest speakers to talk about the future of the seafood industry. So I think we've got a little bit of everything in there for, for most people. And, um, you know, we wanted this summit to be very different in terms of uh, the interaction among amongst the presenters, uh, the the industry experts, and the de uh, the delegates. Heather, that's a fantastic description. Uh, I love the way you've got it outlined with the platforms and the socials, of course, will be very important. Keith, uh, is there anything else you wanted to add to this? I just wanted to highlight something Heather said in terms of uh, what's so important and uh, interesting about uh, this summit is, is the interaction between industry and the actual fabricators and creators of technology and innovation, you know, they're going to be here with, with some of their own designs and, uh, and automated equipment, but also to hear from industry in terms of what industry has seen in the past decade and look into the decade ahead, what they think they need to meet their demands today and future global markets. Because you're always predicting in the industry where the industry is going to go and what the products are and what they're going to look like in the future and what you believe the market is going to want. So, you know, that's extremely important. The other point I'd, I'd just like to quickly make is that, you know, some of the occurrences in the world over the past number of years uh, has demonstrated supply chains and the challenges with supply chains and how you need to react differently and often quickly to, to meet those markets or to uh, send your product into different markets. And that often requires uh, certain automation and innovation to meet those needs. So, you know, whether it's Russia now producing crab and sending it into Japan or you know, abundance of pig salmon from the, from Russia now, and that's going into the market. So, the, you know, it's it's much bigger than just domestic issues. I mean, this seafood industry, uh, we're going to talk about Lenny Canada, but everybody involved knows it's uh, it's global, and you need to pay attention to what's happening around the world in terms of supply chains. So you continue to have success, and you know, innovation and technology, and being adaptive 
play certainly a huge role in that. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's a, f a fantastic summary. Heather, any final words for you? Uh, we still have um, spots open. So if you haven't registered yet, uh, there's still opportunity to do that. And we still have some sponsorship packages available as well for anyone interested in, uh, in sponsoring the event. Well, I'm going to say thank you to both of you. And if I may, at this point, I just want to mention Gale Force Wind's role. Would that be okay? I think it's yep. important to let everyone know that this is an amazing summit that you two, and I guess there's others that put in to this. What our role will be, will be to take thought leadership from the floor of the various platforms, the sessions, the demonstrations, workshops, and the networking. Any of the people involved can sit with us. We will do a interview type recording, and it'll be put up on a YouTube playlist for the summit such that not only will those important conversations that happen on the floor, they will be brought into the digital space to live for infinity. So we're really excited and appreciative, Keith and Heather, for you to take us on. This is something that's uh, based in St. John's, but we've been around the world doing this. And I think this summit is incredibly important to the industry. And our role will be to try and take that um, those thought leaders and bring them to the world. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, fantastic.